I'm going to be completely honest with you. Potty training a toddler is rough stuff. It's definitely not easy and there is so much information and so many different methods out there. It can be super overwhelming to figure out even where to start. In this video, I am sharing some potty training tips and secrets that we picked up from going through the process with our 20 month old toddler. So if you wanna know more about how to potty train, early potty training or potty training toddlers, then sit down and don't move until the end of this video. Hey everyone, welcome to the Innovative Mama. My name is Jess. I'm a mom to a now 21 month old toddler and I'm expecting baby number two in less than a month. I am super passionate about helping moms with little ones navigate the world of early motherhood. So if you're interested in parenting tips and early childhood activities, then definitely go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you never miss an upload. The method that we chose to go with for potty training our toddler was the oh crap potty training method, which I really, really liked. I wanted a no nonsense kind of rip the bandaid off potty training plan. So this seemed to fit what I was looking for. There is a book for this method, which obviously I did buy. However, the author of the book, her name is Jamie Glowacki, by the way. She's awesome. She also created a course that is super affordable and can be watched really, really quickly. We actually bought the course first and then I bought the book just to kind of quickly reference things throughout the process of potty training. But I highly recommend getting one or both of these resources if you're interested in the oh crap potty training method. I will leave links in the description box below if you wanna go ahead and find out more information about those. So first in this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of this method and then I'll be moving into some potty training tips, tricks, and secrets in the second part of this video. So definitely be sure to stick around for the whole thing. I will also have a video coming out on how to put together the ultimate potty training kit and what kind of supplies you need to make this transition as smooth as possible. So definitely make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss that. So let's start with an overview of the okra potty training method. So this method has five blocks as Jamie calls them. You move through them and you move to the next block when you successfully complete the previous block. I love this method because every child is different and it could take more time for some and it could take less for others. I like that it's a little more flexible with the timing. You kind of just move along as your child progresses. Also, there is no set time frame for how long your child is in each block. So some blocks may take longer and may vary. So you may finish one quicker than the other. I'll be talking about that with like our own experience. So you'll see a little more what I'm talking about. So let's talk about the blocks. So you start in block number one, which is no pants or underwear. So nothing on their bottom half. If you want, they can wear a shirt. We chose to do this in summer, obviously because it's warmer out, but yeah, nothing on the bottom. They are either completely naked fully or completely naked at least from the waist down. So your goal in this block is simply to get pee and poop in the potty. The other goal of this block is to literally watch your child all day for his or her cues that they do that let you know that they have to use the potty. So like, for example, like a little potty dance or tiptoeing or like kind of holding themselves. However, they let you know that they have to go. So you're watching what happens right before they release and go to the bathroom. You definitely need to clear your schedule for this. My husband and I did this together. We planned three days. It was like a long weekend that we took to really devote to just watching him and looking for all his little clues and hints that he had to go to the bathroom. So we had no phones, no distractions, nothing. So in the book, Jamie says that it does take usually one to three days in this block. However, it can go longer. For us, it was around three to four. I found that it really started to click with Luke on day three. The first couple of days were rough. I'm not gonna lie, I cried a couple of times, but we're all good, we're all here. But he started at first, like he was literally just peeing and not even aware that he was going. So Jamie also talks about, you wanna take them from being completely unaware that they even went to the bathroom or going to the bathroom, anything like that, to being aware that they went to the bathroom, then to being aware that they're going to the bathroom and then being aware they have to go to the bathroom. So you're trying to take them from being completely unaware that they even went to the bathroom 
to I'm getting the feeling that I have to go to the bathroom and knowing that so that they can go ahead and initiate and tell you and put themselves on the potty, which comes later. So for Luke, it really started to click on day three. So he was kind of holding it more and we were able to get him to the potty more and get him to actually get get some in the potty. The first couple days he was literally just playing and peeing and not even knowing that he was going to the bathroom at all. So we definitely saw that progression happen, which is good. And that is exactly what's supposed to happen. Even though it's tough, stick it out. These first couple of days are going to be the toughest and pretty boring, but it will be worth it. So just stick with it. You are supposed to stay in this block until they have at least one poop in the potty before moving on to block two. So we ran into a little bit of trouble with this because Luke was having kind of no problem like peeing on the potty, but Pooping was another story. So he was kind of standing at first, which Jamie says like is fine and kind of corrects itself, which it did in a couple of times, but then he started to sit. So I kind of counted it from the first time, like he got any kind of poop in the potty. I put his pants on and thought he was ready for block two. So block two is simply adding pants, no underwear. So they're putting pants, shorts. If you have a girl, you could do a dress but they are going commando with one layer. So Jamie explains how this is important because your child has muscle memory around the area where like the underwear would sit. So when it's tight around like the upper thighs and their stomach like that, it's like a diaper. So the muscle memory of the body, it cues them to release because they're so used to letting it go just in a diaper. So it's important to do this step without underwear at first. So that was really interesting to me. He did pretty well in block two. I think I gave him like a couple of days here. We tried to stay home as much as possible. And then block three is adding short outings, short, short short outings and using the bathroom in other places at stores friends houses you know just as long as they're going to the bathroom in another place so it's just like breaking that habit of having the same surroundings all the time getting them used to going to the bathroom so they're still commando in this block as well once they've done this successfully for a couple of times then you can go ahead and add underwear so i want to say that we added underwear once he was pretty much like going poop consistently on the potty. I gave him a couple of weeks for this. So I wanna say it was like two to three weeks and we were going other places, kept practicing. So it was when I thought he'd be ready for the next step. So I gave him a couple weeks and then we moved on to the underwear. So he actually did well. I think he peed the first day. He peed once in his underwear um, and that was kind of it. And he definitely like, he noticed it cause I think like, cause it's closer to him. And then after that, he was pretty good. So right now we're moving into block five, which is consistent self-initiation or your child telling you that they have to use the bathroom. We are not quite here yet. We are a little over a month in right now. So we are giving this a little more time. He will do it sometimes if he's like in his high chair or something and he really has to go, he will say like poop potty or pee potty. So he's starting to get there, but most of the day we have to prompt him to go. We're telling him when he has to go to the bathroom by looking at his signs, or looking at the time if he's like held it because now he's getting so good at holding it. So if he's held it for a really long time, I will just like have him go to the bathroom. Right now I'm doing like max an hour and a half usually, but sometimes it's every hour. So I'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit. But that's basically the last step. It doesn't mean that you're done with potty training and it doesn't mean that your child is completely potty trained because trust me, you're still gonna have accidents every once in a while. It's just gonna happen. One thing I did wanna add is that she talks about nap or night training. So this is not vital until around 36 months or three years of age because of the development of your child's bladder. So we're not even touching this yet. So I'm not gonna talk about this right now. We're finishing out like his last bit of diapers for nighttime, but we've had him in pull-ups for the afternoon nap. And then at night we've been putting him in a diaper cause we didn't get like night pull-ups yet. But right after the diapers, this pack of diapers is done, we are getting him night pull-ups to transition him to that until he is old enough and ready to night train. 
So now let's talk about some tips that will help make this process a little easier for you. You are going to want to prep yourself. You're gonna to wanna to watch videos or courses or read books, get tips, but I recommend focusing on one particular method. Like I said, there's a lot of information out there and it can get really overwhelming. So I kind of just like heard about this method. I picked it. I heard a lot of success stories from it. it seemed like something I was looking for. I knew I didn't wanna do like, a casual potty training thing, like start putting him on the potty and then putting him in a pull up to go somewhere or like something like that. I wanted to like kind of do it quick and get it done. We also chose to potty train him pretty young because baby number two is on the way and my husband and I kind of sat down and we thought about it and we were like, even though he's a little young, we figured it'd be better to do it now before we have a newborn than after the baby's here. I think it was definitely the right choice, not gonna lie. It was rough doing it while pregnant, but like I said, we got through it. Jamie also recommends that the best time to potty train your child is between 20 and 30 months. So developmentally, this is actually a great time because your child is going through a developmental lull. It kind of lets their brain focus on getting this new milestone down. So that is why it's the best time. I personally think that like the earlier you can do it, the better. There's a lot of talk of like, your child being ready or not. And I think a lot of times, sometimes the parents aren't ready. And it's just one of those things that you kind of have to like bite the bullet and do it and kind of stick with it. And you need a little tough love. You need to be a little strong because like I said, it is rough. So prepare for a rough start. It does get better. Like I said, I cried at the end of day two. It was tough, but you get through it. We didn't know if it was gonna work out. She even says in the book, you have to give it at least seven days before you call it quits. If your child has not shown like some sort of progress in seven days, then maybe it's time to go back to diapers and try again at a later time. You can't let those first like one or two or three days dictate the success of how it's gonna be. She also mentions that if your child is younger, it's still possible to potty train. And if your child is older than that 20 to 30 months, it is still possible to potty train, obviously. It might just be a little harder. There might be some other developmental things going on that could get in the way a little bit, but 20 to 30 months is that optimal window that she suggests. So we were on the low end. We did it right at 20 months. While it was tough, he definitely picked it up and he is doing well with it. The next thing you wanna do is prep your child and pick a date. Start prepping your child about a week or even just a few days before you're gonna start potty training. You could do this by watching videos on TV or on YouTube about potty training. We watched the Daniel Tiger episode where he potty trains because my son loves Daniel Tiger. Read books. Like I said, I have a video coming up on the best potty training essentials and what we bought and used. So I will definitely be talking about the books that we bought and linking them over there in that video. So definitely be sure to stick around for that. A big thing we talked about was saying bye-bye to our diapers. Another thing Jamie mentions is that you don't need to have a potty out before you start potty training. So we actually did for the longest time we had our little potty sitting in the bathroom, but she actually recommends not to do that. It doesn't really change anything. They adapt really quickly to it. So you could just put it out like right before you're gonna get started. My next tip is to have patience. Like I said, the first couple of days will be rough, but it does get better. If possible, I definitely recommend doing those first couple of days either with your partner or spouse or some kind of support person that's around your child a lot. I would definitely clue them in on the method. If you get the book, maybe just like give them a rundown of the blocks or have them watch the course with you if you choose to get the course. It definitely helps to support you like having someone else there with you, especially if it's your spouse or partner so that they know what's going on and you guys are on the same page. Also, anyone who is taking care of your child a lot. So for example, like my mom takes care of my son. So we clued her in on everything and told her the methods that we were doing so that she could implement them when he was staying with her. But it was so much easier doing it alongside my husband because we can kind of take turns on those first couple of days where it was really rough just sitting there. And you know, if one of us needed to do something, cause Jamie recommends like prepping all your food, getting everything ready to go like the day before so that you are not doing anything. You literally need to watch your child all day long, like all day. 
So definitely helped having someone there just as like another set of eyes and for support. And it was good because I feel like we both caught different signs that he was doing, like when he had to go and we would tell each other like what we were saying. So it was just nice. So I recommend that if that's possible. I understand that's not possible for everyone. Definitely not necessary. You can definitely make it work. It just makes it a little easier. My next tip is to clear your schedule and your child's schedule for at least three days, but optimally for up to a week. I know that this is hard and I know that you have things to do, but trust me, you're going to want to be home during this process as much as possible and get your child as comfortable with practicing, going to the bathroom, going on the potty as much as possible. If you're trying to throw other plans in there, it's just gonna make you more stressed out and it's gonna make the process a little more difficult and probably elongated a little more. So definitely try and pick a time to do this when you can kind of clear up your schedule for a good amount of time. My next tip is a big one and this is really hard, but do not ask if your child has to go to the bathroom. If you have a toddler and you're asking them if they have to go to the bathroom when they're learning how to use the bathroom, they are most likely going to say no. You're gonna wanna use prompting instead. Just remember you are in control, you are the parent. So you wanna prompt them with either a choice or a statement. So a lot of time we just use, it's time to go potty now. So that is usually what we pick to do. But you can also use a choice, which I will talk about in a minute. You wanna have your child in loose clothes and teach them how to pull their pants up and down. Another thing Jamie recommends, which I love, is to say, push your pants down because toddlers are very literal. So even though we usually say as adults, pull your pants down, we wanna tell them to push their pants down. So kind of teach them to hook their thumbs into their waistband and push their pants down. So we've definitely been working on this. I definitely recommend doing this as soon as possible, especially if your child is going to preschool or daycare or something. I am always with my son, so I've been slacking on this a little bit, but we're still working on it to get him to push his pants down. It's also really hard for them to reach around to the back and get that part, so it takes a lot of practice. My next tip is to use a timer if you need it. So we did this a little bit in the beginning. I actually kind of forgot about it more recently, but I think I'm gonna implement it again. I definitely recommend getting a separate timer to do this rather than just doing it on your phone. So you can even get one for really cheap on Amazon or Walmart or wherever. I like the digital timers. So I will probably be starting this up again because I think in the beginning we were using it a little too much. I think I'm gonna start that up again and give a little more time spaced out with it. So this next one you might not agree with, but this is just my opinion. I recommend trying to potty train without any kind of incentive. So like a sticker chart, candy, treats, bribery. I recommend leaving those out at first if you can. These are kind of like, in my opinion, a last resort kind of thing. I'm personally not a fan of rewarding children for expected behavior that's something that they are supposed to do every day. I actually find that these things can make potty training more complicated. So I recommend doing it without at first. These can lead to like power struggles with your child. Toddlers are very strong-willed and you know they actually like might backfire even if they work in the beginning it might wind up backfiring and then you kind of have to go backwards and it just gets really messy. That being said you know your child best if you think that this will work for your child absolutely go for it but I definitely recommend trying it without. I am also like a huge psychology geek and I love the idea of what's called intrinsic motivation or intrinsic reward versus extrinsic rewards. Extrinsic rewards are tangible things that you can get like candy, treats, all those. So I am more of a fan of the intrinsic reward because that is the motivation that pushes someone to keep doing something. So this would be the pride that your child feels from going to the bathroom on their own. Definitely try and do it without those things if you can. If you're at a last resort and you really need to add it, go for it. Like I said, you know your child best, but I would recommend trying it at first without any kind of these things. Jamie also talks about not doing a sticker chart with your child where like if they go for a certain amount of time, they can get a reward or whatever, like something, you know, if they successfully go on the potty for a certain amount of time. I know this from having a background in child development and psychology. These don't work for this age group because they're too young to conceptualize getting a 
reward in the long term. Toddlers are very in the now. They need something immediate. They're unable to understand the concept of like delayed gratification and getting something in the future for something that you're doing now. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. You know, if you wanna do like a sticker on the hand, if that's something that works like right after they go, if your child likes that, go for it. But definitely I wouldn't recommend a sticker chart for this age group because they really, they don't understand it yet. Again, this is your choice, but the one thing I did use was a little bit of screen time, especially in the beginning to get Luke to actually sit on the potty and relax. So this is totally up to you. In the beginning, we had a really hard time with him popping up. Like he didn't wanna stay sitting on the potty. So he would just get up and try and go play or do something. He didn't have the patience to sit there and allow the time to actually let himself go to the bathroom. I did let him either play a game or watch something on his tablet just to get him to actually sit there so he could feel what it feels like to actually go to the bathroom. One thing Jamie does talk about is in the beginning, you want them to be aware of that feeling. We tried to do this sparingly when he was like really, really unwilling to sit but if we didn't need it, we didn't use it. Because like I said, you don't want this to be a crutch that they're leaning on. Like they have to have it every single time they go to the bathroom because that's not really going to accomplish your long-term goal. And especially in the beginning, you want them to understand that feeling of actually releasing their pee or poop and having to go to the bathroom. So if you're gonna choose to let them have some screen time, I would recommend it if they're really having a hard time sitting, they won't sit down long enough to let them go or if they're too uptight and they need to relax a little bit, this is a good way to do it. But again, it's totally your opinion. You're the parent, it's your child, your choice. But that's just something that worked for us. And like I said, we did it more so in the beginning and then we started to wean off. He doesn't need it anytime, he goes fine now, he doesn't really use it. My next tip is to remember that there will be occasional accidents even after your child is fully trained. So even when they're telling you they have to go to the bathroom, there's gonna be times, especially if you're potty training your child on the younger side, that they are going to have an accident. There are definitely still times where Luke goes, sometimes it's just a little bit and he'll stop himself or sometimes he just lets loose. And like the other day he was just playing and all, and all of a sudden my husband and I like heard liquid hitting the floor and he was screaming, oh no pee, oh no pee. It's gonna happen every once in a while. So just be aware of that, have them help you clean up their accident and just remind them gently that pee and poop goes in the potty. I love this tip because it is so helpful when you have a toddler because toddlers are all about control. They love having control. They are just realizing at this age that they can have control and that they are their own person and that they can think for themselves. Giving choices is such a good way to avoid power struggles and help your toddler so much. So for example, some choices you can give when it comes to potty training are, would you like these undies or these undies? Another one we use a lot, Luke goes either on the big toilet with the toilet insert or he has his little potty chair. So I ask him, would you like to go on the big toilet or the little potty. If your child's a little older, you can say something like, it's time to go on the potty. How do you wanna to get to the potty? Do you wanna to hop to the potty? Do you wanna to crawl to the potty? So whatever works for your child. So now I'm just gonna talk about some problems that we have experienced in our potty training. One was resistance. So not wanting to go. He's had resistance in the beginning and then he's kind of going a little backwards now and having a little more resistance, which is normal. And you can expect that from time to time. So when he has resistance, we'll say like, it's time to go potty and he'll say no. So something we've used was distraction. Again, giving a choice, taking out his tablet to play a game or watch a show. I've also sat in front of him and I'll gently like put my hands kind of like around his knees just to guide him, let him know I'm there, give him like a guiding hold. And then also deep breath. So sometimes he'll be like, no, no. And he'll be like kind of all worked up. So we take deep breaths or we do either belly breaths, which is breathing in through their nose and they, while they hold their belly and then out through their mouth and they feel their belly get bigger and smaller with their hands. That's a really good one. Or rainbow breaths are another good one. So they breathe in, bring their hands up and then bring their arms down in like a rainbow kind of motion. Those are things that have helped with his resistance. Like I said, toddlers are toddlers. You're probably going to experience this at some point, them just not wanting to go because you said they had to go. So it's just a thing that 
they're not in control, they want to be in control, it's their little toddler brain not being able to handle that. Another problem that we've had with Luke is sometimes he won't fully release his pee when he goes to the bathroom. So a lot of times what he'll do is he'll pee and he'll start going and like he'll basically not even be done yet and he pops up off the potty. How we fix that is having him sit back down and do a little bit more and then we will have him do those breaths again. If he does do this and he's really adamant about not sitting down, sometimes I will just keep his pants off for a few minutes, kind of let him run around and then put him back on just to make sure that he gets all of it out. He's gotten a little better with this. This was kind of like a couple weeks ago. So he's definitely going through ups and downs and phases, which is to be expected. Jamie does reiterate in her book and in her course to remember that this is a milestone. So this is something that your child is working towards. So just remember that. Something else we've dealt with is Luke not wanting to poop on the potty. In the beginning, this was a real problem. Again, you have to realize that your child has literally like been pooping in diapers since they've been born. So it's all they know. So it can be really hard for them to make this transition of letting it go in a potty and not having that security of a diaper. So this could take a little longer. At first Luke was like standing and I would kind of like have to catch it with the potty seat. I know that sounds like so weird and funny, but yeah, it was definitely a sight. The standing usually corrects itself. Jamie had addressed this in her book and the standing usually corrects itself. And it did in a couple times, like he actually sat down on his own and pooped on the potty. So that kind of corrected itself. Um, as long as he was like willing to go though, like if he was standing, I would just do what I had to do. It's kind of like one of those things, like just have to like do whatever to get it done, I guess. Right now, sometimes he's pooping in his pull up at his nap time. Sometimes he will wait and he won't go before his nap and then he will poop in his pull up at nap. And when I go in to check on him, if he's not asleep yet, I can usually tell if he's done it by looking at him on the monitor. And if he's not asleep yet, you know, I'll go in and, and he'll have pooped in his pull up. So that's another problem. Um, and if this keeps happening on purpose, we may move to underwear just for nap time and kind of like put a lot of like waterproof stuff in his crib, but we haven't gotten there just yet. So we'll see, but I think Jamie says that the only way to correct this, if they're doing it awake and on purpose, not this is different than like them falling asleep and you know, releasing in their sleep, that's different. Um, but he's doing it when he's awake. So if he keeps doing this, we might move. And that's what she says. She says that really the only way to correct this, if they're doing it like knowingly and awake is to like kind of move to underwear or nap slash night train, which he's not there yet. So we'll see what happens with that. So those are just some of the obstacles that we've experienced so far. I'm not a potty training expert. Jamie is, she is amazing. I definitely recommend checking out her book or her course. I will be making a follow-up video to this one on all of the potty training supplies we purchased that really, really helped us out. So definitely make sure that you are subscribed and have your notifications turned on so that you don't miss that. If this was helpful, then please click that thumbs up button to let me know and drop any other questions that you have in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.